Hey, this is Rob Michaels, and you are watching the Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today, we are diving right back into the multiverse to talk about Venomverse. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to give away a digital code of a comic I picked up today at House of Secrets. So big shout out to them again for, you know, selling me these books so I can give you guys codes every week. And also Golden Apple and the other stores that I buy stuff at. Uh, but this week it was House of Secrets. I stopped by and I picked up Old Man Hawkeye number three. And since we're talking about alternate ver uh, universe versions of Venom, this is a good one. This has Venom, uh, the symbiote, attached to multiple men from the X-Men, and they're hunting down Hawkeye in this storyline. So this is the latest issue. Boom, there's a digital code right there. Enjoy that. First person to put that code in gets this comic book, and I hope you enjoy it. I've been loving this run so much, and after we get maybe like four or five issues in, I'll probably do a, a video on it. Probably around issue four, I'll uh, do a review of the first four issues. I've been really digging it though, so definitely go pick this up at your local comic shop, and if you got the digital code, enjoy that. Uh, so yeah, today we're gonna talk about Venomverse, so let's cut back to my place and dive right in. This book is just freaking awesome. I love it cover to cover, so there's already my review, but we're gonna break it down. We're gonna talk about some of the story elements and some of the plot points. So if you haven't read this and you don't want spoilers, obviously just go pick it up. I think it's $15.99, yeah. $15.99, you get all five issues of Venomverse in here. It's written by Cullen Bunn, and it's drawn by uh, Ivan Coella, uh, our Facebook friend and super awesome dude who has checked out the show a few times. So thank you, Ivan, if you're out there watching this. And uh, we're gonna break this book down, we're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna give you my rating at the end of this episode. Uh, I thought Edge of Venomverse, it was so jam-packed with short stories that I just put in text my ratings for each one, just because that was way easier for me than remembering you know, what I rated each one. It was easier for me to do in post, so I fixed it in post. But in this one, it's just one story, beginning, middle, and end, and we're gonna talk about it today. So let's dive right in. So where this storyline picks up is actually with Eddie Brock, and he's swinging around New York, and it's him being the lethal protector that he is, he thinks he's being super heroic, and he comes across the Jack-O-Lantern, which is a character that Cullen Bunn definitely likes to write and has included uh, that character in his run with uh, Agent Venom when he was writing Flash Thompson, Agent Venom. And so uh, it starts off with that, you know, Jack-O-Lantern swinging through, or flying through the city, and he's being chased by Venom. And he's like, he's like, no, come on, what's going on? Like, you know, last time he interacted with Venom, it was Flash Thompson. Now it's Eddie Brock. It's someone who's very, very lethal, very intense. Uh, not that Agent Venom wasn't lethal before, but now you have Eddie coming after him and so Eddie does not pull his punches he lands on him punches the crap out of him grabs him throws him off a building and uh and actually Jack o Lantern hits the pavement like hardcore hits pavement shatters his pumpkin head and uh, inside there's his human head that's all burnt up and, and mangled and his face hit the ground there's blood pouring out of his mouth and he's barely alive and everyone who's watching are like holy crap and then like Venom jumps down lands on his back you hear his back crack and then he's like ah oh, god you know and then Venom's like you, you know you're under arrest basically he's like I gotcha you know and he's like you're lucky I don't kill you and all these people are like videotaping it with their cell phones are like oh my god They're like is he dead and uh, he's like no but he should be <laughs> like Eddie Brock's like I don't care about this guy uh, but no he's not dead but he's definitely hurting and uh, and he's like he's like thanks citizens like he's like stands up and he's like you know kind of all heroic like I saved the day and they're just like uh, what's going on? <laughs> this thing is freaking me out. And, and he just took down this other freaky dude. So it was like, you know, just Venom being completely oblivious to how he looks and how he acts and, you know, just thinking he's doing the right thing here. And, uh, and in a way, I guess he kind of is, but before he can even celebrate or go any further, he gets teleported like all the other ones and all the other uh, Venoms from the other universes and Edge of Venomverse, he gets teleported the same way. So he swirls into a black, you know, ooze and then disappears from sight. And everyone's like, uh, should we call the cops or should we call an ambulance for this this jack-o-lantern guy and then meanwhile eddie reappears in the same alley but already you can tell it's a different universe and i kind of like the, what the art uh, uh, coloring team did here is it's the same shot same alley so it sh ends one page with that shot and then it starts the next page with the same shot only the colors are a little distorted they're a little bit more faded so you instantly get the impression okay he's in another world and they only do this for this one page to kind of pull you in and then on the next page it's back to you know like the great coloring scheme that they've been using but i thought this was a great way to kind of blur you in and know immediately from a visual standpoint that you were uh, on you know on another world and I think the coloring team did a great job on that uh, with this page and so now Eddie wakes, wakes up and instead of seeing Captain America like he like everyone else did they saw the venom infused Captain America 
he wakes up and he sees a young boy and the boy's coming at him and he's like sir please can you help me and he looks kind of ratted up and, and beat up and venom's like yeah sure and his symbiote you know recedes and it shows eddie brock's face he's like what's going on around here kid you know tell me what's happening and the kid's like reaching out to touch him and then eddie's like all right man come here you know come here i'll help you and before he could they make contact the shield from venom captain america comes in frame knocks the kid out hits him right in the side of the head and kills him knocks the kid down on the ground and then the symbiote using a string on it pulls the the you know the shield back and cap's like all right soldier come with me if you want to live you know kind of um you know sarah connor ish and stuff and he goes, uh, you know, and, and Venom's like, whoa, whoa, he's like, you're, you're Captain America. Well, you can't be Captain America. First of all, you, first of all, you have a Venom suit on you, and second of all, you just killed a kid. And he's like, yeah, I don't know what you saw, Soldier, but that wasn't a kid. He's like, so follow me. So he leads him back to the Resistance, where we get all of our characters from Edge of Venomverse. We get, uh, you know, the Ghost Rider Venom. Uh, we get Old Man Logan Venom. We get Laura Venom. We get Black Panther, but it's not the female Black Panther, which I thought was interesting. Um, it's a male Black Panther, and uh, or at least if if it's female, the way they you know Yvonne drew the character uh, definitely made him bulky, like you know just like the frame, his frame in general looks uh, very uh, masculine, I guess. And then but the legs were the big indicator because if you remember the girl, she was like this young petite girl in the book uh, in the in the Edge of Universe book. She didn't have legs, so she had like grasshopper legs that grew from the symbiote. This character, this version of Black Panther did not. So that was the first thing I was like, oh, maybe the girl's gone and maybe they found another Black Panther to, you know, to recruit. Um, and then there's an Ant-Man Venom, uh, which is cool. I think that Ant-Man Venom was on the cover of the Edge of Venomverse War Stories, but they that character never got a short story. I wonder if they cut it for time or they maybe, you know, didn't get the art in on time or they planned it, but it never worked out and they decided not to do it or for page count or whatever. Uh, but I would have liked to see a little backstory on the Ant-Man Venom because he was pretty cool. And he has a lot of good moments in the storyline uh but then another character i saw missing was gwenpool the gwenpool venom but most of the other ones are all there and and they're all you know helping out and captain america's like this is our resistance here's what's going on there's a, a alien race out there called the poisons and they are coming for us and they have deemed themselves the perfect hosts so they they refer to themselves like the poisons refer to themselves as you uh, you know things like the, i think they're like union they keep saying union they're like you know like oh we're we don't we unite we don't uh, we don't poison the symbiotes uh we unite them so we take like according to their point of view the poisons will attach to a, a clintar symbiote who is already attached to you know another host and it fuses those two hosts together into one mind that works under the control of the poisons uh so to them they think they're unifying uh you know uh different races so they're like all right you bond sim like a symbiote to a host but you're not perfect and when we come on we make you perfect and then you think like us you walk like us you talk like us and you serve the same purpose we serve which is to you know take over the whole universe so they want to spread symbiotes out and then consume the symbiote uh, host person and bring them into the poison fold so you know there's a big big things happening from their end like there's they have big plans and uh, and on this side we have you know the the symbiotes like we have dr strange who was infused with a symbiote when he was that they say his backstory he's like looking into other worlds and he found a symbiote and it fused onto him. And ever since then, he's been looking for other venoms to battle the poisons because uh, he is not strong enough by himself. And then he recruited Captain America and they recruited a bunch of others, but it hasn't been enough. And they're trying to stop the symbiotes now before, or the poisons now, before those poisons find a way into those other worlds and kill all these venoms one by one and pick them off. So they're like, look, we're trying to unite because eventually they have magicians like Doctor Strange, they have Scarlet Witch, they have other characters they're going to find a way into these other realms and they're going to take you on and they're going to take you down all by yourself. Um, so instead of doing that, we, and they're also going to find where your Clintar is like from your world, they're going to go to that planet infuse all of them, bring them to earth and fuse all the heroes. You know, it's like, trust me, we've seen it happen on other worlds and, or we, we, you know, we are afraid of it happening on other worlds. We've seen it happen on this world and we're trying to stop it from happening on other worlds. So Venom at first is like, yeah, I'm not a team player and I don't care about all this. I don't want to help out. And he's like, and what was that thing I saw back there? It was a little kid. And Captain America is like, yeah, dude, it wasn't a kid. It was a sim. It was a, a poison. It's these little hatchling, like the bigger poisons. You can punch them and hit them all day. Uh, but the smaller ones, the little hatchlings, those things, one touch and they will fuse into you and you will become a poison. So you cannot touch those things whatsoever. So Venom's like, yeah, sure. And then meanwhile, there's a Spider-Man there 
And in his world, he never gave up the suit. It's a Peter Parker. He never gave up the black costume. And so he knows who Eddie Brock is. And he's like, yeah, I know Eddie Brock. He's a psycho. And then there's Mania there uh, from Cullen Bunn's, you know, uh, run with the, and I think Rick Remender's run of, of Agent Venom. And she's there and she's like, hey, uh, I know an Eddie Brock too. And he's a total nut job. So there are people there that are aware of who Eddie Brock is. But most of them don't. They're like, yeah, I don't know who Eddie Brock is in my world. Like, he's he was a nobody. Um, so Eddie's kind of like, yeah, I don't want to team up with you guys. I'm not here for that. Uh, but before he can even get into it further and try to get them to send him back to his own reality, uh, even though they make a, a lot of good points, like, hey, look, if we try to send you back, they might follow you. And then you're done for because you're all by yourself. And he's like, so you should better just stick with us and let's hold the line here. And before they can even get into all that, uh, Hulk poison shows up. So you have the Hulk poisoned out. He kind of looks like Doomsday a little bit from DC Comics. He's got like bones protruding from his face and he comes in and just starts kicking everyone's butt and it causes all of them to split up and go into different groups. And so Spider-Man, uh, the Peter Parker Spider-Man with the Venom costume, him and Eddie go one way, everyone else goes another way and Captain America is captured unfortunately. So without Captain America, the teams are all divided and they're all fighting different poisons in different parts of the city and they're trying to reunite and get back to each other and Spider-Man and Venom are just not getting along and they're like, look, if you cross me, I'm going to knock you out and Spider Spider-Man's like, yeah, you, you know, me too. Uh, I hate you and I don't want you anywhere near me. And then uh, they get into a big battle with a bunch of poisons. And before they can, uh, you know, they're trying to watch each other's back. They're trying to help out. And they're just like, all right, like, I hate you. You hate me. But let's take these guys down and then we'll work out our differences. And Venom's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So they get into it. They fight these poisons. Uh, but then as Eddie Brock's getting the upper hand, he doesn't notice that behind him, Spider-Man sees Aunt May. He sees like, you know, a, a frail Aunt May, kind of the way the little boy that uh, Venom saw. And Venom claims that he he doesn't care any, about anybody, so he can't be fooled by the poisons. That, that's what he claims. Uh, but he did see this little boy, so it looks like the poisons can still disguise themselves as like a, just a random citizen and ask for help, and that will, you know, affect Eddie Brock. So he looks like he still does have a weakness to help people, um, and well, not a weakness, but that's that's the what they're going to exploit. The poisons are going to exploit to get him. Uh, but Peter, he actually has a loved one that shows up, and it's Aunt May, and so she reaches out and says, "Peter, just grab my hand, and me, you, and Uncle Ben can be reunited." And he reaches out and grabs her, and of course, it wasn't Aunt May; it was a hatchling. So this Spider-Man becomes a poison, uh, and he looks awesome. And they're even going to make a toy of him coming up, which I'm very, very excited about and he's the first like big threat that Venom fights so him and you know Spider-Man and Venom or Spider-Man Poison and Venom they start going at it big time and they're fighting and kicking the crap out of each other uh, but then some of the other teams like Rocket and some of the other members they show up Wolverine uh, both Wolverines uh, X-23 and Old Man Logan and they show up to save Venom and they get him away from Spider-Man uh, but meanwhile while that's going on and the team's trying to go back to uh, you know reach Doctor Strange the poisons are interrogating Captain America and they're showing him um, Sharon Carter and they're trying to get him to make contact with the, the ghost of her, even though it's not a ghost, it's another hatchling, but he's fighting it the best he can. He's trying to hold out the best he can, but unfortunately he's unable to and he gives in and he becomes under the control of the poisons. And then as he does this, uh, he starts to remember where the, all their hideouts were and everything and he starts sharing that information with the poisons. And then as the team that got away from Spider-Man saw, there was a Deadpool. Deadpool, there's actually not a Gwenpool, but a Deadpool on their team uh, from the Edge of Venomverse book. And this Deadpool, he noticed that when uh, Peter got hit with the poison and it transformed him into a poison, he saw that there was still a part of Peter's mind that wasn't fully uh, didn't fully turn right away and so it gave Deadpool an idea so as the team is heading back to find another headquarters where Doctor Strange is and they're gonna sh like Eddie Brock has come up with a plan because as he's had full-on contact with the poisons now he thinks he's found a weakness on them and so he's like let, let, let's go back to Doctor Strange let's have him summon someone here that uh, that I think will help us fight this battle and while he, they're going for that plan Deadpool breaks off and goes for his own plan and what he ends up doing is going right into the hive of the poisons and giving himself up and says look I want to convert so you know turn me into a poison and so they do and now Deadpool is a poison member as well so uh, him and Cap and Spider-Man are all like sh you know sharing information and telling the poisons out of the locations they remember they're like all right there's there's definitely, uh, you know, hideouts that we you guys haven't found yet. So we're going to split into teams and we're going to lead you to these hideouts. So they're getting ready to descend on where Doctor Strange and the others are. And Eddie shares his plan saying, look, we need to bring Carnage here. You need Cletus Cassidy Carnage because in my world, he was born on Earth. So don't bring mine here because I don't know what's wrong with him or what happened to him. I haven't seen him in years. Uh, but 
we need to bring Cletus Cassidy from some universe. And uh, the reason for that is because he was born on Earth and he his his uh, you know symbiote acts differently than all of ours. Like these poisons are used to us. They fight venoms all day. They just you guys keep recruiting venoms and they keep taking them down. But they are not going to be ready for someone like Cletus Cassidy. First of all, we don't even know if he's going to be on our team, uh, so he's a wild card for sure. Uh, but his constructs are different. They actually make solid uh, objects and they stay solid. So he could probably cut through these guys. So they're like, all right, this is a long shot. We don't know if it's going to work. We don't know if we can wrangle this guy, but we're going to try. So Doctor Strange uses powers and summons a Cletus Cassidy from another universe into this one. And when he shows up, of course, he's like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by Venoms. I'm, I'm going to kill all of you. Like he's so happy. He's like a kid in a candy store. He's like, I'm going to kill all of you. And Eddie Brock's like, look, you hate me, I hate you, we hate each other. And he's like, yeah, you smell like my dad, but you're not my dad. My dad's dead or something like that. You know, and Eddie's like, look, I'm not the, the Venom from your universe, but you were, you were the closest thing we could find to the Cletus Cassidy from my universe. So I, we want you to fight these things. Like there's an alien race coming and you can kill all of them. You can eat them, you can do whatever you want. We're literally giving you a full, full range to murder all of these things uh, if, you, if you'll accept uh, you know, working with us. And he, of course he's like, no, I'm gonna kill you guys. And then if they show up, I'll kill them too. But this is great. Thanks for bringing me to a planet, which is basically a buffet for me. I'm gonna kill everything here. And uh, before they can get into it, though, the poisons do show up and uh, Cletus is called into action. And so him and Venom, uh, Eddie Brock, they team up and they're fighting the poisons. And just like Eddie thought that Cletus Cassidy could do, he's doing it. He is slicing through poisons like butter and he is killing them left and right. And so he is definitely, his plan of recruiting Carnage has definitely turned the tide of this battle. So after they take down, uh, you know, all the, the poisons in the area, uh, there's still more show up and then, you know, Deadpool's team and Cap's team and Spider-Man's team, they all start descending on this one location and it forces the team to go on the run again. And so they take off. But this time Deadpool reveals that he's actually a double agent. He saw that Peter Parker wasn't fully transformed immediately and he was hoping that since he's crazy that the craziness would fight off the poison, uh, you know, uh, control for a little bit longer than Peter was able to hold out for. And he was right. So he is still in control. Even though he's a poison, Deadpool's still in control, but he, he can tell his mind is slipping. So he says, hey guys, follow me. I'm going to lead you out of here and we're going to come up with a plan to go attack the poisons head on at their location. And they're like, yeah, but Dr. Strange is back there and he stayed behind to, you know, hold them off so that they can get away. And and he's probably going to get captured. And then Deadpool's like, don't worry, let him get captured and we'll go rescue him. Like we got, this is our last ditch effort. None of us can get home without Dr. Strange. So we're going to go have to go back for him anyway. We might as well go right into the heart of their facility. You can use me as a double agent. I'll help you kill them. Carnage can kill them and we'll get Dr. Strange and we'll all go back to our own realities and just be ready for the you know the war later because we are not going to win this now and so they all decide to agree on that and they all take off and meanwhile like i said dr strange was left behind and he gets uh, captured by the poisons by captain america and they bring him back to their facility and they start uh, interrogating him he uh, dr strange casts a spell of protection around him and it's slowly dying it's slowly getting weaker and the poison you know uh hatchlings are getting closer and closer as it's weakening and then they reveal at this moment, the person who seemingly is in charge of all the poisons, uh, the one person uh, we saw Gwenpool, she shows up, she's a member of the poisons, but also one of the other people in Edge of Venomverse that we didn't get to yet, which is Dr. Doom. And Dr. Doom is full on a poison and he seems to be in control of all the other ones. So he steps up, reveals himself to Dr. Strange and says, look, either Scarlet Witch or I or someone, we're gonna find ways into the other realities. Uh, but we wanna thank you because what you've done is you've shown us that there are ways into other realities. And once we learn your spell, we're going to do it. We're going to go to those worlds and we're going to conquer them. So you've not just been bringing people here to fight your war. You've been bringing us food and ways for us to tra trace their scent through the multiverse back to their worlds. So we have big plans and we like that you've been recruiting all these people. And that's why we've been letting you do it because, uh, you know, Doom wants to control everything. And so he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, so Dr. Strange, thank you for everything you've done. But from here on out, we don't need you anymore. We're going to find our own way into the other universes and we're going to consume you and and you're going to help us do it. Last act of the book is pretty much, you know, Venom and his team with Deadpool and Carnage and the few members they have left, which is like Rocket Raccoon and, and Mania, uh, Black Panther. Uh, they pretty much are on, they're, they're doing a suicide mission. They're going to go right into the heart 
of the uh, the kingdom of the poisons of where they're holed up right now and they're going to try to you know uh, save dr strange and get him to send them all back to their worlds so that they can prepare their worlds uh for invasion and that's basically the plan because they know they cannot win now and now that they know they've been pretty much brought here to find ways to other worlds, they know that they're done for. And they're like, okay, they're just gonna sweep right through us. They let us come here. They let us you know, recruit people and we're done. Like we played right into their hands. So we might as well go back to our worlds and try to prepare for battle. And uh, and so they're all heading in. They go to rescue Doctor Strange. Deadpool uh, you know, is doing what he can. He's fighting off the infection still. So you're kind of wondering, is he gonna turn? Is he not gonna turn? But I liked it because him and Carnage actually develop a friendship, which is pretty cool, because I know Colin Bunn wrote the crossover, the miniseries, uh, Deadpool versus Carnage, which we'll talk about, you know, down the line. Uh, but I thought that was really cool that he made them kind of, they became friends in this, because they're just like enjoying killing poisons left and right. And, uh, and then there's Rocket, and he goes off with little Venom Ant-Man, who then sees like a ghost of Cassie, his daughter, and of course gets consumed and becomes, uh, he starts to become a poison, but before he's fully transformed, uh, the team comes in and they kill him before he, he's like, he's begging them like, please kill me, don't let me get turned into one of these things. So they they do a mercy kill on him. And uh, Rocket does what Rocket does best, builds a giant bomb, and he's like, all right, do you got Doctor Strange? They're like, yes, we freed him. We, we freed Doctor Strange with the help of Deadpool and Carnage. Uh, we, you know, we need to get out of here. And Doctor Strange's like, look, I've already done the worst. I brought you all here. Now they know, they're going to know soon how to get to your worlds. They're going to know where to find you guys. So it's probably best I just send you all back. And they're like, they're like, okay, but maybe we can fight. We're right here. There's Dr. Doom is right there. Like we can fight them. And, and Dr. Strange is like, look, it's, it's not that simple. And Dr. Doom isn't actually in charge. There's something much bigger going on here. And uh, he actually does kind of serve somebody in a way. So you trust me there's no hope so dr S dr strange casts one last spell and transports all the surviving members of the venom core that he put together all back to their world so eddie shows back up in our universe mania goes back to hers black panther goes back to his everyone goes back to their respective worlds that's still alive left alive although old man logan does make a sacrifice at the end and he gets killed and deadpool and carnage seemingly go down swinging uh, as everyone else gets taken away so uh, they seem to die um, in this battle uh, when the bomb of that rocket raccoon built goes off and it does kill a lot of the poisons it does kill like their facility it does destroy a lot of the hatchlings uh, but even though the team gets away at the very end dr doom comes out and you know walks up to his master i guess uh, even though to me doom serves nobody but if they're all part of a hive mind it kind of makes sense that he would be given the world to be in control of and there'd be someone up there ready to rule the universe and that is thanos and there's thanos and he has all of his guards and everyone around him and they're all poisons as well and thanos is like so are we finding ways into the other realms and other realities and he says yeah and he goes yeah so this isn't a loss for us and doom you're still alive so you can still be my general and we are going to find ways into their realities and we're going to conquer them completely and we're going to start with the clintar race we're going to go find their home worlds and other realities and we're going to take control of them and we're going to find them hosts and then make them poisons after that and we they have a big nasty world plan that they are universe spanning and multiverse spanning a plan that they are putting into action and uh and unfortunately dr strange who went down a hero still was kind of responsible for it and so uh so he ended up dying with the explosion and everything so it's it ends on a bleak note it's definitely like the empire strikes back of colin bunn's uh series although Edge of Eniverse wasn't fully written by Cullen Bunn. He just wrote one short story in there with Doctor Strange. This is kind of his first movie, in a way, in the trilogy. And then Poison X is the next episode we're going to talk about, uh, in, probably in a couple episodes from now. But Poison X is the X-Men and Venom teaming up, and the poison slowly coming into our reality, finally. And then Venomized, which comes out on Wednesday, we're going to talk about that's issue number one, and that's part one of a five-issue story of the conclusion of everything that was set up in Edge of Venomverse and here in Venomverse. So hopefully we'll get to see the Poison Doctor Doom again and Thanos and all those characters and some new ones that are going to be made in the Poison X crossover with the X-Men. So we'll talk about that very soon. But all in all, the artwork on this book is why I love it so much. The writing is pretty good. I think Colin Bunn, when he's on, he's really on. And in this one, I feel like with this artist, they just worked really well together. I think him and Ebon are really awesome. And I think that's why I'm so excited for Venomized is because I know these guys fire on all cylinders 
cylinders when they're working with each other. So I give this book from a writing standpoint and an art standpoint and just the whole thing in general, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Uh, I liked it that much. And when my roommate bought me this at Christmas, I had the single issues. I read this and then I went back and was like flipping through the single issues and just finding my favorite piece of artwork to scan and uh, and just fell in love with it. Then I went and became friends with Ibon Coella on, on Facebook um, and then, you know, started talking about him on the show. And it's just been this kind of opened my world to other artists out there, especially a bond. I would have never known who he was if it wasn't for this book. And he's done some other great stuff that I found uh, recently. So I'll put a link to his Facebook down below and Colin Buns as well. So make sure you go follow those guys and check out their stuff as they post uh, information coming up about Venomized, which will be a weekly series from April leading up to the first week of May of this year, 2018. So those are my thoughts, guys. What do you think? Have you read this book? Let me know what you think down below. Hopefully I didn't spoil too, too much for you, but I did kind of spoil the whole thing. Uh, but uh, this book came out, you know, about five, six months ago, maybe seven months ago, and it's just an awesome read. So even though I told you some of the big hits in it, trust me, there are a few things I left out, but even, even saying that, this book in general is just a fun time. Just cover to cover, it's just awesome. It'll lock you in, and there's a lot of really great moments in it. So go enjoy it for yourself. $15.99, pick it up at your local comic store, or order it online if you live if you don't live near a comic store. Thanks so much for watching my videos. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.